topic of discussion now is the New Age Agenda. And before we go into this, I'd like to just highlight, it's called the New Age Agenda, because there is an agenda behind the New Age. Let me ask a question at the start of this lecture. What was Satan's agenda in the previous lecture? Can you remember? Well, how did he go about in the battle of the mind? This graphic described it where I showed that Satan has got one network and Jesus has got a network. Not only does the, the uh, network not coincide, but they are actually direct opposites from one another. And the network that Jesus wants us to focus on is split into two areas. Personal experience and absorbing the word of God versus the evangelism and spreading the word of God. Those are the two areas of Jesus' network. What about Satan's network? Well, that was split into all of those sections. And I just mentioned a couple of them. TV, music, rock and roll, sex, pornography, uh, sport, uh, magazines different areas to channel our focus away from the Word of God. Now, how does this affect mankind and where does it fall into place? Well, let me go back to the very first lecture. You remember that I was born into a family of four, myself and my sister and my parents, and that we grew up as Christians. We grew up with the knowledge and the understanding of Jesus Christ, and we were heavily involved in the church. When I grew up or when I had got to a, p a stage in my life where I started to ask difficult questions, my wife and I decided to leave the church. And I never realized it at the time, but turning my back on the church to me meant turning my back on Jesus Christ. And I left the church specifically because I was searching for the truth. I asked people questions like, how do you know Jesus Christ is God? Where is Jesus Christ in the world at the moment. How do you know is he in heaven? How do you know he is where? What? Well, what about Allah? The Muslims say that he's God. Is he the same thing as Jesus Christ? And Vishnu? And Shiva? And Buddha? Well, this was the question I had and nobody could answer it for me at the time. And that's why there's an entire lecture entitled, Who is God? If you don't know what I'm speaking about on finding out who God is, well, have a look at the lecture. It should answer your questions. But we left the church because we wanted to find the truth. And as we turned around and we walked out this door of Christianity as such, we didn't realize it at the time, but only after we had left could we see that my wife and I had walked into the New Age movement. We started on a journey of personal and spiritual enlightenment, what they call enlightenment. And I started to read many, many books. Books about the New Age movement, or more specifically books about self-help. How to help yourself with certain ideas. How through the power of your mind you are able to generate not only income and wealth, but also the success and affluence and influence that you would like to have in the world. I read these books and I absorbed the various success recipes that they explain in these books. And time after time after time, I was testing and trying these things. And through affirmations and various meditative processes, I was trying to open my mind to building the success for myself. On this journey, I also met many enlightened people, what's called enlightened, the, you know, the people that have got more knowledge or experience about life and about certain things as I do. And... Not only that, I was striving after wealth and influence. So meeting these people, I had a specific requirement that when I was, say for example, meeting Sir Richard Branson as an example, I would ask him what his success recipes were that I could put them into my life. You see, I not only wanted to find the truth, I wanted to help people. And the idea in the New Age movement is that the more wealth you have, the more you can share. So it's a giving sort of getting, if you like. In this process, I also wrote a book and started a career in motivational speaking. This book was sold ex in uh, the bookstores nationally in South Africa. And I also traveled internationally and locally, studying under various of the gurus at the time. 
Some of them were Anthony Robbins, as I've shared with you, uh, Edward de Bono, who came up with this idea of lateral thinking, John Kehoe, but many, many others, people including uh, Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, Stephen Covey, John Maxwell, Brian Tracy, Jim Ron, Norman Vincent Peale, Mark Victor Hansen, Dr. Phil, Jack Welch, James Redfield, James Allen, Leo Biscaglia, uh, Alan Cohen, all of these names that I had spent time absorbing this information. Napoleon Hill, the think and grow rich ideology. Through the power of your mind, you can create this wealth. Well, this is the basis that I had because I wanted to become affluent and at the same time, I wanted to find the truth. People don't realize today that the self-help industry is possibly one of the most profound hooks into the New Age movement that is out in the world at the moment. The hooks are, are related to our personal success. That's just been released now is another example of this, and that's The Secret, as you've probably seen on Oprah and you've seen on TV and some of the newspapers. This idea of The Secret is now being released into the world. If you go to their website, you'll see it says, it can move mountains and it can create miracles. Again, always the New Age people have to quote the, the biblical sources in order to twist it in some sort of occult fashion. What can move mountains, according to the word? Faith. And who can create miracles? Jesus Christ. Not the secret. See, the problem with this is giving a certain element of power that belongs to God and putting it into man. This is a form of pantheism where God is in everything. I am God. You are God. The camera is God. The lights are God. The tree is God. Your dog is God. Everything has got God in it. And the secret is a continuation from that. And it leads people who all people are trying to do is create a bit of wealth for themselves, a bit of excitement, a bit of affluence, and at the same time help people. And these hooks bring them in to a, a, a system that they have no idea about. And I'll get into the system a little bit later. The secret says, now you will know the secret and it can change your life forever. The lady who set this whole thing up Rhonda Byrne, she says, as you learn the secret, you will come to know how you can have, be, or do anything you want. You will come to know who you really are. You will come to know the true magnificence that awaits you in your life. And this idea of finding out who you are, this inherent godness inside you, that's the foundation for the secret. It's just the same as all the other books, the same as... as uh, Anthony Robbins, the same as various of these other New Age leaders. This idea that affluence is an indicator of your association to enlightenment. Well, not really, because you've got to be careful. This is exactly what the Sadducees and the Pharisees believed when Jesus was rebuking them and said, what is exalted amongst men is an abomination in the sight of God. On, this, on the, the website, The Secret, and in their trailer, you see some pretty horrific things. If you understand the language which I started to teach you yesterday or in the previous lecture, the occult symbols in, in the trailer are mind-blowing. Here are some of them. Ralph Waldo Emerson, he says, The secret is the answer to all that has been, all that is, and all that will ever be. Many don't realize that hidden in time, he was involved in many occult things. Other people that they mention on their website or on, in this program, The Secret, are people like Newton, who was an occultist. Plato, who was an occultist. They quote Buddha, they say, all that we are is the result of what we have thought. Uh, no, Buddha, I beg your pardon. All that we are is a result of sin coming onto the initial perfect creation, which was done through the power of Jesus Christ. You also see these images of the moon over the sun god pyramid structures. So this is sun and moon worship, hiding secrets at the feet of the pyramids. And then not only do you see the symbol of humanism, which is the man in the circle, but now they've changed that in from male into female. These occult symbols are everywhere if you understand the language. You see the moon god or the genie. The God of the stars says, your wishes, do you need help? Contact us. 
And as you move your mouse across the page, you see the secret. You see, boom, there comes the eye. Making of the secret. See, these are occult symbols for people on the inside initiate who know how to read this language. Let me just give you a couple of examples of what's in the trailer alone. Go onto the website, just run the trailer, and you'll see it for yourself. In the trailer of the secret, you'll see this, the word Rosicrucian flashed in an absolute split second. You hardly even see it it's so fast, but that goes into the subconscious. Not only that, you've got these pyramids and the images of sun worship with the moon, sun and moon. You've got a broken cross also written in hieroglyphics. And then the a soundtrack, the audio at the back says, speaks about the secret as the uh, god or the emperor, if you like, walks over and touches the goddess on her forehead here on the eye of Shiva. You remember the eye of Shiva, who that was? Satan. That's the eye of Lucifer, the all-seeing eye. As he touches her, the statue turns to gold. Who was able to turn stuff to gold? You remember that was Midas? That's the Midas touch. And who did the god Midas uh, worship? He worshipped the god Pan. And therefore Midas with this godness within him could touch everything and he would turn everything to gold. And then as the scribe just towards the end of the, the trailer of this the secret movie, the movie The Secret, right at the end the scribe is furiously scratching and scribbling down what he's supposed to hide and take off to the next element. And on the wall next to him is the hieroglyphic of the Egyptian sitting with the ankh around his arm and the Shiva triangle up and the Shiva triangle down. I've explained through the lectures all of these symbols. And you just have to go back in, in to the lectures to find out what they are. As you scroll down the page, one of the last things that just s seals this entire thing is the symbolism where you see the candles and these occult symbols. And on top it says, a new era for humankind. The new age, if you like, or the new era. In Beyond the Occult, on page 502, the following statement is made. As long as man accepts mental stagnation as a norm, man will continue to mark time at his present stage of evolution. You see, the entire occult movement, the entire New Age idea, the deception of being able to create something for yourself, if it's wealth or affluence, whatever it is, comes from the idea that there's a certain element of God inside you, Godness or Godhood inside you. And that through evolution we are spinning towards Godhood. This, this image which you saw in the evolution lecture explains exactly that. The New Age is just a continuation on where we've come from dinosaurs or from rocks initially into some sort of bacterial form or first life form to seed mollusks across to dinosaurs and then up to man and we are continuing this spiral onto Godhood and each, re each incarnation allows you to reach a higher karma. Well, evolution is the basis for the idea of the New Age. And I never knew, understood that these were occult or knowledge or understanding when I was searching for the truth and spending time with Sir Richard Branson, as you see here where he's signing my book, and with the Shuttleworth family and Grant Shuttleworth specifically, I was looking for answers. I was searching to find the truth. But there was a problem in my life specifically. The more effort I was putting in, the less income I made. I thank the Lord today that I... I realized at a point in time that he had blocked my income source. Because if he hadn't blocked my income source, I would have, gone, would have been lost. Sometimes the Lord allows what seem to be negative things on the surface to come into your life. To guide you and lead you back to the truth that is Jesus Christ. I was doing everything right in my career at the time. I was involved with the right people. I had all the right information. But yet, I could not break through this financial barrier. There was something wrong. And so I started to search for more occult knowledge. I got involved in new age healing methods, which we'll get into just now. My wife also got involved in crystal healing. We got involved together in angel worship, and we'll get into that just now. What's this angel idea, this idea of being involved with angels? Channeling, channeling energy through into sick animals, into sick people, into sick plants. Being able to channel energy from this universe. 
and reincarnation. I went into my past lives, or at least I was told I went to, into my past lives, but I had to go through hypnosis to get there. And hypnosis does what? You remember? Drops the cognitive thinking, opens your mind to influences that you can't identify who's putting the information there. Maybe it's God. Well, he doesn't work like that. He says, I'll enter through your cognitive thinking. He doesn't have to ask you to drop your thinking to enter into your mind. And then I went into transpersonal hypnotherapy, which is even going in between lives to try and figure out what the problems were in my life. And you see, re reincarnation is exactly one of those arts of the New Age movement. It's the idea that when you die, your soul comes back over and over and over again. It is a deception and a big lie that comes from the Garden of Eden. And interestingly enough, to be able to go back in time and to be able to go back into your past lives, you have to be under hypnosis. You cannot do it cognitively. The same with transpersonal hypnotherapy. You see, in Genesis, it warns us against this, and it says that the serpent beguiled mankind. Read it with me. Genesis 3, verses 1 to 6. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, is it so that God has said you shall not eat of every tree? I mean, is he so cruel? Is he so horrible? Verse 2. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Verse 4. And the serpent said to the woman, you won't surely die, for God knows in the day that you eat of it, then your eyes will be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasing to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she gave to her husband with her, and he ate. You see the problem here? God says, don't do that, or this will be the consequence. Satan takes us, he twists it around and he says, no, 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 you won't surely die. In fact, God's lying to you firstly about the tree. He's cruel, he's horrible, and he's, he's despicable to not let you eat from every tree. So not only is he lying to you about that, he's lying to you about the consequences. You're not going to die, you're going to evolve into some sort of a God. You'll become like gods, and you'll have the knowledge of good and evil. This entire lecture on the New Age movement, the New Age agenda, can be summed up in two words. Received, became. What do I mean by that? Well, Genesis explains this loud and clear. We've done an entire lecture on what happens when you die. Let's recap and find out what happens when you are brought to life. Read it with me in Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man received a living soul, right? What does it say? Man became a living soul. The entire New Age movement is based on the premise, premise that man received a living soul. It's not only the basis for the New Age movement, it's the basis for most of the Christian beliefs today, most of the religions around the world. Christian denominations believe that you receive a, an immortal soul. It's also the foundation for Buddhism. It's the foundation for Islam. It's the foundation for all the other religions as well, where this certain immortality, the God inside you, the immortality which only belongs to God, that is inside mankind. It's a form of pantheism. And pantheism has even entered into the Christian religions. That's why the satanic high priest could say, having a background of experience measured in millenniums, the demons are engaged, or fallen angels are engaged in a fierce conflict for the control of men's minds. The spirits would encourage people to listen to their feelings instead of the word of God, or Christ and his prophets. He also says the man said, the satanic priest said that demonic spirits have worked through the centuries to convince people to accept the concept that human beings have an inherently immortal soul. And belief in life after death, he argued, constitutes necromancy. It allows demon spirits the opportunity to impersonate the dead. And not only that, the idea of incarnation or reincarnation, just the repetition of some immortality,
comes from Satan and not from God. And that's why the Lord warns us over and over and over. And those nine things which are li listed in Deuteronomy 18 explain the same thing. Don't get involved in this. Don't get involved in that. You don't understand as a child how dangerous the highway is for you. I'm your parent. I'm telling you, don't go and play on the highway. It's dangerous. Don't walk through fire. Don't walk on coals because you don't know what you're busy with. Don't use divination, trying to use tarot cards and predict the future. Don't be an observer of times using astrology to try and figure out what's going to happen. An enchanter, a witch, a charmer, all these Harry Potter ideas. I know it sounds fun and it's all good and um, warm and fuzzy. It's dangerous. You're playing on the highway. You don't know what you're busy with. Consult of familiar spirits and a wizard, a necromancer, one who consults with the dead or one who believes in the dead. Satan teaches this idea of immortality after death. In Revelation 16, verse 14 says, Satan deceives them that dwell on the earth by those miracles. You see, the immortality of the soul is the single point which, uh, when you remove it, it destroys the entire New Age movement. It even destroys the self-help industry. The Jim Ron, the... the um, Deepak Chopra, the um, Anthony Robbins idea of the secret even of being able to create this wealth for yourself. You can't create anything in your life. You are either given it from one source or given it from the other source. See, the Bible explains something very, very simple. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. So there's a, there's a request here. Seek first what the Lord is asking you to do, and then all those things will be added. In other words, they'll be given to you according to God's will. What if God's will is that you don't receive that brand spanking new BMW? Well, if that's God's will, then that's God's will. We don't understand it at that p point in time. One day we'll be able to ask Him. But the problem today is that we don't want God's will on us. We want our will. I want that BMW. And if I have to have that e BMW in my house, or if I want the fancy house, the fancy car, the fancy clothes, the fancy watch, I'll create it for myself. And there you have the opening of this door of temptation where I'll do it myself. Because God doesn't know what I need. I know what I need. The Lord says, seek first the kingdom of God and all the things will be added unto you according to my will. We say, well, I'll, se I'll seek first my needs and then if there's some time, I will maybe study your word. Not only is that dangerous, it's satanic. You see, because the deception is then allowed where God warns us, he says, I will give you what you need. Satan says, you can give yourself what you need. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called a self-help industry. And this is such a silly term because if you can't help yourself, how can you help yourself? Unless there's some element of God inside you that you still need to figure out how it works. The self-help industry is one of the most dangerous hooks into a bigger New Age system, which is lying dormant and hidden in the, uh, the ages and the sages and the, the, the top echelons of secret societies these images explain exactly how these people are hooked voices from heaven it's always this idea of goodness coming forth architect archetypes of the zodiac images of some angelic beings and something with clouds and these ideas that are rummaging around our head about becoming involved in forces from above that will help us to achieve success no not necessarily you either receive it from the one power or you receive it from the other power. There's nothing you can do yourself. See, the lie is that not between God giving it to you or Satan giving it to you. It's God giving it to you or you giving it to yourself. Satan doesn't want the recognition for it now. He'll let you think that you're doing it. He's not, you're not doing it. There's only two forces in the world. You either receive that BMW through the grace of God or you receive that BMW through the grace of Satan. I know it sounds hard and it sounds cruel, but if you think about it, that's the truth. Virginia is seen who's a modern channel, had this to say. Jesus spoke through her, supposedly, and he said, 
Death is the creation of humanity, not of God. This is the simple truth. Death is the creation of humanity. Do you remember what Helena Petrovna Blavatsky said about the evolution theory being the basis for the theosophical society? And evolution says uh, uh, man didn't bring sin into the world. Sin brought man into the world. And here Jesus speaking through this New Age channel says that death is the creation of humanity. Can you hear that it's the same language? Is this God language or is this serpent language? It's serpent language. And that's why Clive Barker can have this book, The Life of Death. And then this inside cover that says, you cannot die. The incredible findings of a century of research on death. Well, you don't have to do a century of research on death. Just read what the Bible says about death. And uh, if you have to, then go and find out what the inner initiates up in the hidden echelons of these secret societies say about death. You'll see it's exactly the same thing. We've done that. If you don't know what I'm speaking about, get the lecture on what happens when you die. That's why Ecclesiastes 9 verse 5 and 6 warn about this. Nothing happens after death, this idea of this immortal soul. What really happens is the following. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. You see, this is openly stating how incorrect and inaccurate this belief in life after death is. But the Lord repeatedly warns against getting involved in it because it is the basis of the foundation for doctrinal error. It started in the Garden of Eden and you'll find it in all the main religions and you'll find it as the base of the New Age, at the foundation of the New Age movement. Tarot cards, putting out these tarot cards. What's this all about tarot cards? Divination. Well, we've just discussed it. Don't go and play on the highway. You don't know what you're busy with. The Bible warns mankind to stay away from any involvement in the supernatural. Even if it seems intriguing and it seems like there's certain things that are working, we cannot identify the forces. And the Lord says, don't get involved with it. I know it might not, you might not understand. Read this text with me from Ephesians 6. It says in verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's the thing. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. The war that's going on in deception at the moment is a war of the, the angels of Satan versus the angels of God. And this continues today, except they're doing it via deception. That's why this idea of personal alchemy, a handbook of healing, self-transformation. How can you transform yourself? It's Jesus Christ that transforms you. He's God. He's the true ruler. He's the one that'll help you. Or this idea of magic, you know, rituals from the Merlin Temple, the magic of the Dragon Kings. These are demonic things. I was amazed when I saw the cover of this book, Planetary Magic, a complete system for knowledge and attainment. You just zoom in on the front cover and have a look at the occult symbols in there. You'll see the ape at the bottom. You'll see on the bottom left you've got the unicorn and on the right you've got the lion. You've also got the two pillars of Freemasonry, Joachim and Boaz. Those are biblical things that Freemasonry has taken. On the top left you've got the moon god, the sun and the moon face. On the right you've got the sun. And then in the middle, you've got male and female standing separately and up on top with the wings of angels, how they are joined through their sexuality. You see, this idea is what our children are being led into when they start fiddling around and reading Harry Potter. The, the line across his forehead, this idea of some or other lightning streak, where does that come from? Well, the insider initiates know that. The symbol of the lightning is the symbol for Satan falling from heaven. And here Harry Potter with his big cute little glasses with this lightning who's pulling millions and millions of children into divination and witchcraft and sorcery is getting him to play on the highway. Leviticus 19 verse 31 says, Do not turn to mediums or spiritists. Do not seek them out to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. I'll help you. Don't get involved in this rubbish. Please don't play on the highway. This is repeated in Hebrews 9.17. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, 
But after this, the judgment. You don't die and then something happens. You die, you're asleep, and then boom, at the judgment, certain things are going to take place. So what's this about new age healing methods? How does this work? Well, there's many ideas you can go into. My wife and I were involved in crystal healing, involved in uh, energy channeling, involved in color therapy, Reiki. You've got metamorphosis. You've got guided meditation. You've got uh, psychic shielding. Many, many ideas. Also, this, the use of labyrinths. You see more and more on TV today the idea of being able to walk through this labyrinth and get some meditative state about yourself and be able to hi reach a higher karma. All of these are ways of becoming the channel by which you can achieve certain health, wealth, influence, or affluence. Here you have the world's finest new age and relaxation music label. This lady here who's sitting, all she's doing is just relaxing. But she's opening her mind to a spiritual war that she has got no idea about. If people understood that there was a spiritual war and Satan has to get your defenses down in order to attack you, we would never drop our defenses. Constantly the New Age teaches people to listen to their feel feelings, to open their mind, to become as spiritually clean as possible. No anger. If, you're ang if you've got anger, you cannot channel the energy. By channeling the energy, you become the channel. You remove Jesus Christ and you become the Alta Christos. You become the mediator between God and man that people can receive healing. This is a warned, this again biblically is warned about in, in the way that the Bible speaks about spiritual beings. This is a spiritual war and all you have to ask yourself is are we spiritual beings or are we physical beings? Well, we're physical beings. And if we are physical beings, is there, therefore, is it possible really for us to become truly involved in spiritual warfare? No, because we never know what we're dealing with. And it might come across that we, even in Christianity today, you get this idea among some of the churches of spiritual warfare and chasing out the demons. and You don't know who you're dealing with. These are new age ideas coming into the Christian churches. Revelation 16, 14 says again, for they are the devils and they are the spirits of devils working miracles so what's this about natural healing hands of light a guide to healing through the human energy field archetypes of the tree of life a tarot as pathwork and the enochian workbook now yesterday i started to teach you the language of of these secret symbols just look at the enochian workbook cover and see if you can start to see certain things you see the pyramid you see the sunset? Can you see the capstone of the pyramid is missing? We'll explain that in a later lecture. But yet on top of the pyramid is a female type figure who's carrying a flame above her head. Does this now sound familiar? The light bearer, the female male end top of the pyramid? We'll get into that a little bit later. Tarot spells, seeds of magic, what about the golden dawn with the Shiva triangle up and the Shiva triangle down? These were the symbols that are on the, the trailer for the secret. If you, don't know what you, if you don't recognize the symbols, you won't have a clue what you're getting involved in. And Clive Barker that writes his book, Revelations, a key, complete book of amulets and talismans, how to divine the future using pendulums like my wife and I used to do to try and predict what was going to happen. Would I be able to afford my new vehicle? Cosmic keys, fortune telling for fun and self-discovery. Pyramid power, the idea that there's some supernatural force associated to pyramids. Well, there is. It's actually called a satanic force, if you're quite honest with things. Astrology for the millions. Well, not only can you not do certain other things, but as regards healing methods, whether it's Reiki or metamorphosis or psychic shielding, or whatever it is, you cannot do it in the name of the Trinity. What do I mean by that? 1, Corinth, or 1 John 5 verse 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Now, the New Age healer or channel, if you're a Christian and you're practicing this, I challenge you today to do your treatment, the very next treatment that you have to do, kneel down and pray in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in the name of the Trinity, and then try and do your healing. 
you'll see that you can't. You cannot ask Jesus Christ to come and heal if you are going to come and heal. It's either you that are the channel or it's Jesus Christ that's the channel. You cannot be the mediator if the Bible says there's only one mediator between God and man and that's Christ Jesus. You become the altar Christos by becoming the channel by which you are able to channel this energy. That's why you have to remain pure and clean and try and get rid of all these blockages so that you can give the energy across as cleanly as possible. Those of you that have never been involved with this, you might not know what I'm talking about. Well, that's a good thing. Because those of you that know what I'm speaking about, I ask you to reconsider and just check whether you know what you're actually really involved in. What about the angels? In the New Age movement, there's this big leaning towards angels and the use of angels, the influence of angels. One of the first things that needs to be understood is that there's two sets of angels. Very, very, very important. Two sets of angels. One, there was initially one set of angels of which the head of the angels was Lucifer. That was his name when he was in heaven. Right? The covering cherub, the one that sat next to the Shekinah glory in heaven. Next to the throne of God, the highest angel was Lucifer. And out of heaven fell he and his angels. Right? So now you've got two sets of angels. After the war in heaven continued the war on earth, you've got two sets of angels. One which is dealing with heavenly things and one which is dealing with demonic things. Lucifer became Satan. His angels have become demons. And today people are dealing with angels and not knowing which set they're busy with. Is it the good set or the bad set? You've got to be careful because we cannot trust our feelings or our experiences to determine which one are we're associating with. The Bible warns that Satan comes as an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. So they're going to look like they're doing good. They're going to feel like they're doing good. You feel this euphoric type of atmosphere when you're involved with the angels. Is it God? God's angels? Well, you're not sure because you're trusting your feelings. And Satan's satanic high priests will say, don't trust your feelings. We're busy manipulating them. Not only that, most of the angels that are depicted in the New Age movement are female. This is a big challenge because unless you understand the occult imagery of the right eye and the left eye and the male and the female, the good and the bad, where Baphomet is both the combination of good and evil, this idea of male or female angels is satanic, not godly. In the Bible, male uh, angels are depicted as some sort of powerful manly type being but it's quite clear that they are unable to procreate they are created beings but do not have the ability or the facility to procreate that's why satan hates mankind the way he does because for the first time when man was created in the world god created an individual or a being that could get insight into what it would be like for god we are the only being on, uh, in this universe that is able to procreate. And through our procreation and looking at our children, we are then able to understand what God is going through when he looks down at us. Satan hates the fact that we can procreate. He hates the fact that we've been made both, both male and female. And inside God himself, the Bible speaks about him protecting as a chicken would gather her chicks. That's like a mother. But then again, he speaks about war and rage. He's got both characteristics inside God. He's able to be a God of both the male and the female. But he is depicted as male. Jesus is depicted as male. The Holy Spirit is depicted as male. All the angels are depicted as a male type entity. And yet Satan depicts his angels as male and female. And if you want to know who you're busy with, just have a look. Are they male or female or both? Well, when we were involved in angels, one of the individuals that was called in was an angel by the name of Metatron. We did this through a channel, what I would today recognize as a white witch. She, she called in to try and release my blockage and my, wife's, my wife had terrible back pain. He was called in to try and release us from this. The guy that she, or the angel that she called in was a gentleman by the name of Metatron. I've explained who he was and we'll get into that also in the next lecture. Metatron is an alias according to the sages and the adepts at the top echelons of this hidden secret society stuff. 
They say, and Albert Pike himself says, that Metatron is an alias for Lucifer. Not only that, the female, do you remember, was Sandalfon. Well, let's have a look from Crystal Links about this new age idea of Metatron. What did they say? Who did they say Metatron, this angel, is? Let's read it. He says, He is one of the greatest of all angels, honored as the angel of the face, the angel of the presence, chief of the ministering angels, the chief recording angel, chancellor of heaven, the angel by whom the world is maintained. But precious few of the celestial hierarchy are credited with such majesty and power. Who is this? This is the, 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 the angel of the presence. What was the presence? The Shekinah glory, the very presence of God, that light above the Ark of the Covenant, also in heaven, in the, the, uh, above the mercy seat, the very throne of God. This is the angel of the presence, the angel that was next to the presence of God. It continues. In angelic artistry, it says, In the Talmud and the Targum, Metatron is the direct link between God and humanity. So here, Metatron is the mediator, not Jesus Christ. There is a mysterious connection between Metatron and the Shekinah. There you go. Shekinah, and now they twist it. Shekinah is the female principle of God in man. The Shekinah was exiled after the fall of Adam and Eve. Oh, that is such drivel. Absolute rubbish. The Shekinah is not the female element of God in man. This is satanic. The Shekinah glory is the very presence of God in heaven. This is how they give you the truth, they then twist it like he did in the Garden of Eden and spit out some other trash for mankind to accept. And I, I, the reason why I get so excited and angry about this subject is because I accepted this as if it was truth. Listen to this. It says, I looked up the name in my book of angels. Metatron is an actual angel as well. They both have different stories, but also both of their names have been used as the name of the angel of death and for Satan. Do they know who they're dealing with at the upper levels? For sure they do. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14 and 15 says, And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. There you have it. These angels that the New Age movement is dealing with, that I was dealing with, they're not God's angels. These are Satan's angels. These are demons being transformed, transformed into an angels of light and ministering as ministers of righteousness. And they'll use names like Uriel, which they'll find outside of the Bible in the apocryphical books. They'll use Isaiah is one of the angels. Um, Daniel, they'll use the, the names like Michael and Gabriel to try and make you feel comfortable if you're a Christian, that you're not too disturbed by this idea of being involved in angels. And you can even get an energy drink called Fallen Angel, energy from heaven, a new dimension of energy drinks. You know, it's always incredible for me now, looking back, once, now that I understand the language and I can understand these things, I go onto a website like this one, circleoflight.com, and here this lady is reading or has a website explaining how she can help you become involved with the angels and how the angels can help you to predict your future and channel uh, certain things into your life. Well, read it with me what it says. Angel readings channeled, there's the problem, by three angels, Metatron, Yanni, and Uriel, through clairvoyant psychic spiritualist Reverend Cassandra Anaya, living in San Diego, California. Hi, I'm Reverend Cassandra, the vehicle through which these angels speak. Giving an angel reading, I must completely disconnect myself from the physical realm to tune into you through the angels. So they're involved in spiritual things. She doesn't know what she's in. Well, maybe she does. I'm thinking and I'm hoping that she doesn't. It says further, the people, the angels that she calls upon, as she said, is Metatron, Uriel, and Yanni. An angel reading can give you insight, shed light, and guide you to find the faith and courage to let go and be healed. To you see yourself as God and the angels see you. To bring positive thinking into your life, thus creating a more fulfilled life. Please allow me to help you through those troubled times, to empower you with happiness. And she goes on and on and on. Open the door and let me help you find the answers to life's troubles with the assistance of the angels and my psychic healing powers. I can help recover your passion and destiny and give you never-failing advice on love, marriage, money, and career. A channeled angel reading can help restore your energy, and she carries on with this drivel. Oh, and by the way, 
30 minutes is $90, 45 minutes is $130, 60 minutes is $180, and if you want it in person, it's $225 for an hour. This is disgusting. This is making yourself the channel and be, being rewarded for it. Jesus is the channel. Was he rewarded for it? No. He is God. Who are you and who am I to now become the alter Christos and become the process through which the, the people can realize that you've got a certain level of guruness about you? This Metatron is even influencing music. Carlos Santana, this is spoken about all over the place, as we've explained in the previous lecture. But he goes further, he says, The faith and philosophy that inform his music, this is Carlos Santana, are channeled through his longtime guardian angel, Metatron, twin to female Sandalfon. This is the male, female, left eye, right eye, same old dribble. Both figures found in ancient religious texts and mythology have a prominent perch in Santana's worldview. Metatron is the architect of the electrons. Listen to this. Architect of the electron and the angel inside the womb of every woman. He makes the fingerprints. No, he doesn't. Jesus Christ makes the fingerprints. Metatron and company have also dissolved boundaries be they musical genres or national borders in his thinking. He's the one that brings the nations together. Is that God? No, God said, clunk, nature separate. He's the one that's breaking down barriers and having unity together. This wonderful idea of power in Metatron. Well, here, go back to Circle of Light and see what she says. Metatron, highest archangel, the one who occupies the throne next to the divine throne of God. Who was that? We've just said it. It says here, in the world of Jewish mystics came to hold the rank of the highest of the angels, despite his not being mentioned in the scriptures. I disagree. He is uh, described in the, or, or included and mentioned in the scriptures, except he's just changed his name. He goes from male to female. He goes from left eye to right eye, from good to evil. So all he does is he adds a new name. Now he's called Metatron. In the Bible he was called Lucifer, which became Satan. Read on. It says, Metatron has also been identified as the liberating angel. In other words, the one who freed mankind in the Garden of Eden. And the one who wrestled with Jacob. No, that was Jesus Christ. The one who stayed Abraham's hand from sacrificing his son Isaac. No, that wa certainly wasn't Metatron. And the one who led the Hebrews through the 40 years in the wilderness. No, that was Jesus Christ. In certain schools of mysticism, Metatron, said to be the tallest of all the heavenly beings, became known as the lesser Yahweh. In Hebrew, the letters YHWH stand for the sacred and un unpronounceable name of God. Here, this Metatron is exposing who he really is. He wants to be God. It says it over and over in the script. I will be like the Most High. I will, I will, I will. He had an eye problem in heaven, and it carries on today. I am the lesser Yahweh. I am the, the one who stayed the hand of, of Abraham when he was going to kill Isaac. I am the one who led the people through the wilderness. No, that's Jesus Christ. This guy is claiming to be Jesus Christ. It says, Metatron is charged with the sustenance of mankind. He has been known as the link between the human and the divine. Well, there you go. He's calling himself the channel or the mediator between God and man. There's only one of those. Okay, so after all of that excitement... Who's behind this New Age movement and why do I call it an agenda? Well, for that we have to go back to the finger in the pie. Talat de Jardin is a Jesuit priest who has been involved in many things, include, including deeply involved in evolution, paleontology. Not only that, he is the energy behind the New Age movement. He's pushing it from the Jesuit side. His quotes read as follows. Tala dreamed of a humanity merging into God and each realizing his own godhood at the Omega point. This belief has inspired many of today's New Age leaders. In fact, Jardine is one of the most frequently quoted writers by leading New Age occultists. This gentleman is one of the major energies behind this idea of man merging into God. Is that biblical or is that satanic? Well, it's the basis of the evolution theory. We know who the God of evolution is. He himself wrote in his book, Christianity and Evolution. He says, a general convergence of 
religions upon a universal Christ who satisfies them all. That seems to me the only possible conversion of the world and the only form in which a religion of the future can be conceived. He's bringing together the idea of all religions, whether it's Islam or Buddhism or Hinduism or Judaism or Christianity, all of them are pretty much the same thing and there will be one Christ and this is known as the Gnostic Christ or the Cosmic Christ, the Universal Christ or the Maitreya. Talat Dejardin is breaking down all the insider Christian stalwarts, the pillars that are showing that Jesus Christ is the only true God and he's making sure that Christianity fits in not only with the evolution theory but with the idea of accepting this new age Christ. He works through many channels. One of the channels is this channel here, as you see, called the Wandering Bishops. These are inside Catholicism, the bishops that are pushing the New Age movement. And please note the hand signals. You can immediately, once you understand the language, recognize who they're busy with. Mary Baker Eddy said, or at least she was the founder of Christian Science, her book, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, was voted one of the 75 books by women whose words have changed the world by the USA's Women's National Book Association. These are some of the statements from her book, Science and Health with the Key to Scripture. She says, evil has no reality. It's neither person, place, nor thing, but it is simply a belief and illustration of material sense. Jesus, the highest human corporeal concept of the divine idea, rebuking and destroying error and bringing to light man's immortality. Let us remember that a harmonious and immortal man has existed forever. Death and illusion, the lie of life in matter, any material evidence of death is false, for it contradicts the spiritual fact of being. And she says, soul is the divine principle of man and never sins, hence the immortality of the soul. So it's only the outer nut, the shell of the nut, which sins. Not the truly the inside godness of you, the pantheistic idea of God inside. It's just the outer shell that when you die, that pops off, and then your soul continues. Your soul doesn't sin. It's, ah, this is satanic. This is absolutely satanic. She says, man and woman as coexistent and eternal with God forever reflect in glorified equality, the I infinite father, mother, God. You see the front of this book, Woman's Spirituality Book? And it looks so wonderful. Up on the top right, do you notice the eagle forming the Baal Haddad? We're going to be looking into many more of these subjects. How does the New Age movement infiltrate Christianity? How does it influence Mormonism, the Church of the Latter-day Saints? What about Jehovah's Witnesses? How does this affect the space program? What about business? We're going to go into all of these in 